So you technically can build muscle at maintenance or even in a deficit, but that's only going to be possible to a significant degree in select cases. And if you're currently within a lower to moderate body fat level and your primary goal is to add overall size and strength, make no mistake, you need a calorie surplus to maximize your results. And if you have a higher daily energy expenditure or a smaller appetite, that's not always easy to do. However, by the end of this video, it will be. You'll know exactly how to hit your daily calories for muscle growth without having to force feed, revolve your entire life around your diet, or feel bloated and uncomfortable 24 seven. So let's jump into it. All right. Tip number one, which has to be mentioned up front before going into any of the specific dietary strategies, and that's to consider whether you actually need to be eating more calories than you currently are. So many people out there have the wrong idea about bulking and think it means cramming their face 24 seven all day long until it hurts both physically and mentally, and that more food always equals more gains, but that's definitely not the case. This is a big, fat, sloppy mistake I personally made in the past as well pun intended, and it's very important to keep in mind that your body can only divert a relatively small amount of protein and calories toward muscle growth in a given day, and beyond around two to 300 calories above maintenance, the majority of what you take in beyond that point is just gonna be stored as fat. Building quality muscle is a long-term game of very small increases gradually stacked up over time, usually no more than a couple pounds of additional body weight per month if you're going at a proper pace, and so don't assume that just because you aren't seeing significant changes on the scale or in the mirror every single week that you need to immediately go and increase your calories. It's entirely possible possible that your current intake is just fine and that you simply need to be more patient. But if your results truly have stagnated, the scale hasn't moved at all for several weeks, your strength is plateaued, here are a few helpful options if you do need to bump your calories up but you're struggling with appetite. So tip number two is to increase your fat intake. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that since the goal is to build more muscle, that means they should just eat more protein. Not only is muscle growth going to be already maxed out at around 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight daily, but protein is also the most satiating of the three macronutrients and it has the highest thermic effect where up to 35% of its total calories are burned through digestion alone. As long as your total calories are within the proper range and you're getting enough protein to optimize hypertrophy, the rest of your macronutrient distribution really just comes down to personal preference. And since fats contain nine calories per gram, which is more than double that of protein and carbs, that's gonna be the easiest and most efficient way to hit your surplus with a smaller volume of food. Nuts, nut butters, seeds, oils, chocolate, avocado, coconut milk, fatty fish, these are all great sources to consider. One handful of almonds is around 200 calories right there. A tablespoon of olive oil is 100 calories. Just 50 grams of dark chocolate is 300. One cup of coconut milk is over 500. There's no need to be afraid of fat as long as you don't go overboard, and adding in just one or two of these sources might be all you need. Tip number three is to eat more junk food. Okay, I know some people are immediately going to lose their mind on that one, so let me rephrase it to say it's okay to consume a controlled amount of higher calorie processed food, assuming the majority of your diet is still coming from nutrient dense, minimally processed whole foods. If you're otherwise healthy and active, your total calorie intake is at the proper level and it contains around 80% plus of clean food. Adding in some higher fat, higher sugar treat food to make up the other 20%, that's not going to hurt you and it's one helpful way to get into a consistent calorie surplus since those foods pack a lot more calories into a smaller volume. If you've been brainwashed into this old school bodybuilding, 24 seven clean eating mentality, all sugar is bad, all processed food is evil and is gonna cause you to shrivel up and die on the spot, and you're trying to cram down nothing but chicken breast, brown rice and broccoli all day long, that's gonna make it a lot harder, especially if you have a small appetite. So whether it's a few cookies or a chocolate bar, some ice cream, pizza, burger, whatever, that's okay in moderation to bump your total calories up and because it's just enjoyable in general. Tip number four is to consume more of your calories in liquid form. It's really not that difficult to whip up a homemade shake in the 800 to 1200 calorie plus range. And this was something I used to do quite often myself back when I was really trying to maximize my gains. The go-to base combo was milk blended up with oats, banana, peanut, butter and protein powder. And then from there, you can easily make this a lot higher calorie if you want by increasing the fat content or by adding in some treat food like we just talked about. Two tablespoons of olive oil added in, which is like this much extra liquid, that'll be 200 easy calories right there and you won't even taste it. Again, you can swap out regular milk for coconut milk, toss in some nuts, dark chocolate, avocado, or on the emptier calorie side, there's also higher sugar yogurts, uh, a bit of ice cream, maybe some cereal, plenty of options there. As far as commercial weight gain powders go, I'm generally not a big fan of those since they're usually just a mix of whey protein and simple sugar, usually maltodextrin, so you're really not getting much of anything in the way of micronutrients and fiber. If possible, I'd recommend 
recommend making a homemade version since it'll be a lot more nutrient dense and it'll taste better too. But again, if it's just being consumed in a controlled amount as a minority percentage of your total calories, then you could optionally use a weight gain powder here and there if it's convenient and you need something on the go. And finally, tip number five, along with adding high calorie dense foods into your diet, there's also the option to reduce your consumption of low calorie dense foods, or at least swap them out for higher calorie alternatives. If you naturally have a small appetite and you're loading up on salads and low sugar fruits and super lean proteins, you're going to feel a lot fuller for a smaller number of calories. So for example, if your vegetable intake is quite high right now, you could optionally reduce that a bit, at least temporarily while you're bulking. I'm obviously not saying don't eat vegetables, but you could just lower the quantity slightly. When it comes to fruit, rather than low sugar options like, let's say, berries or watermelon, which are very low in calories and high in water content, you can go with denser, higher sugar options like bananas or mangoes or even dried fruits like raisins or apricots. When it comes to protein, rather than eating nothing but chicken breast, you could add some chicken thighs into the mix. Instead of white fish, which has next to zero fat, you could offer something like salmon. Uh, you could go with fattier cuts of red meat. Rather than skim milk or skim yogurt, use some higher fat options. You get the idea here. It really just comes down to properly managing your food volume to calorie ratio. When you're cutting, you typically want maximum food volume for fewer calories. And when you're bulking, if appetite is an issue, then you want to do the opposite. If you want some more help getting your overall fitness program onto the right track, not just on the nutrition side, but training as well, make sure to visit seannow.com custom. Just fill out the short form on that page and I'll send you back a free step-by-step -step plan based on your current condition and your goals. The link for that is in the description. Here are two more videos I'd recommend watching now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on future videos. Thanks for watching guys and I'll talk to you again soon.